studio two years ago, I think, for the reissue of the first trilogy. Right. Uh, this time you prepared the new one. Now it's gone. I saw it yesterday. I like it very, very much for many reasons. But uh, now you think it, it was much difficult to do this one than the first trilogy? More complex? Uh, it's more complex, but um, it was actually a lot more fun to do uh, because we've taken the medium uh, from a very restrictive, um, almost fresco, painting fresco-like environment to doing oil paintings, which mm -hmm. is now my imagination can, can be expressed uh, as it is in my head uh, more easily. You know, it was very hard before, uh, uh, and very restrictive, and now for this kind of a movie, which is a fantasy film, um, I was able to, to create the world that I mm -hmm. actually wanted to create in the first film. So in that way, it was a lot more fun. It's a lot more complex, but at the same time, it's it's learning a new medium. It's mm -hmm. fun. It's exciting. You know, we're experimenting every day to, you know, to to deal with issues. Um, so um, I enjoy that, and and I enjoy uh, again being able to uh, think of something, mm -hmm. and then put it on the screen as opposed to think of something and say, oh, it's impossible. We can't do it. But why are you waiting l such a long time before to direct this one? Well, it's taken that long, really, to develop the technology. You know, uh -huh. Digital cinema is is just, this is the very brink of digital cinema. It didn't exist five years ago, and it especially didn't exist ten years ago. So, uh, And without that, we really couldn't have made a movie like this. Uh -huh. You think now you, you can direct everything? Uh, everything is possible with the computer and the special effect? I think so. I mean, not anything is possible, but I say it's... it's um, you know, it's much more. You're much more free to expe express your imagination. It's not a, it's not a thing like as I say. Uh, uh, it used to be that when you were painting a fresco, you had to put your plaster down. You had to make sure the whole drawing was finished in one day before it dried. You had to have a lot of people mixing your colors and making sure they could mix them right so they dry the right color. Uh, there was a lot of expense involved. You had to have a very uh, wealthy patron to take care of you and do all this kind of stuff. Once oils were invented in the mid 15th century. The artist could mix his own colors. Uh, he, if he didn't finish in a day, he could go back and repaint it. He could change his mind and, and, and work with it and think about it. Uh, he didn't need a lot of people around, and he didn't need a lot of very uh, uh, expensive patrons to, in order to do it. He just mm -hmm. needed enough to pay his living expenses. <laughs> uh, and it's very much that way now with digital cinema. It's, it's moved to a place where the artist is freer, and I think the medium will be opened up to a lot more people, mm -hmm. so a lot more artists will be able to work in it. But how you have the imagin imagination to create a sequence like a race or submarine view? Uh, you are like a kid, in fact. You, 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 you fought like a kid for direct for to try to build the, the, the race sequence. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, for the race sequence, uh, I grew up racing cars. That's uh -huh. what, when uh, Up until I was 18, and I wanted to be a race driver, and I worked in a car mechanic, actually. I worked uh, in a Renault shop and um, I uh, uh, you know I'm fascinated with speed um, but at the same time uh, to do a race like this which is sort of the, the fantasy race you, you just couldn't do it without the technology that I had now available to me and um, making a film for younger people uh, you know you have to you want it to appeal to younger people and to have a lot of kinetic energy um, I come out of film school uh, I love the, the kinetic side of cinema. I love the movement. Uh, and uh, to me, that's, that's what makes film different than, than uh, uh, graphic art mm -hmm. uh, or, or any of the other mediums. Uh, and uh, that's what makes it exciting for me. I, I, I'm an editor and a cameraman, and I like, I like things that moves. And I think that's a, a strong element in all of my movies. I saw some, some EPK from your movie, and it's amazing how you control everything. Uh, is it important to you to control everything, to have a, a, the view of everything? Well, I think you have to as an artist. I mean, one thing uh, I think that, that, that makes an artist is you're sort of very uh, stubborn and you're very wanting to get your vision on the screen. And uh, the more people you work with, uh, uh, the more difficult it becomes. Um, making films is very much like architecture. You know, building a large building, it's, uh, it takes a lot of people that you have to oversee to make it come out the way you want it to. Um, and um, so um, that's, just, that's just part of it. I'm lucky to have a very, a very gifted and, and uh, uh, devoted group of artists that work with me. And uh, it's really 
the, the 20 years I've spent building that group mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and having them work with me and, and grow with me has allowed me to make a movie uh, you know, this quality. The same with the merchandising you have to control also because you're a businessman, not only a producer or director. Well, on that part of the merchandising, it really has to do with the fact that you know I'm a San Francisco film company. I'm not a Los Angeles film company. And therefore, I've had to build my, my company out of nothing. Uh, in San Francisco, there are three film companies, Fantasy Films, uh, which uh, started which sells records in order to make movies, uh, American Zoetrope, Francis sells wine in order to make movies, and Lucasfilm, which sells toys in order to make movies. But you can't, you can't make any money making movies. You have to find a f way to... To, to get the money to make the movies you want. In Hollywood, they do it differently. You know, they have big studios, they have large resources to do that. But as an independent filmmaker, you don't have those resources. You have to come up with them any way you can. And that's where I've been fortunate enough that merchandising has evolved into a, a way of making money that has allowed me really to have the creative control over my movies that I have. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.